Today I've got a problem from a contest called the 239 Open Math Olympiad. And this is a math olympiad from the Ukraine. So I don't really know the history of its name or anything about this exam. Maybe post in the comments if you have an idea of why it's called the 239 Open. Okay, so let's look at our problem. So we say that a natural number m is good if we can write m as the sum a plus b, where a and b are co-prime, so in other words, their GCD is one, a decomposes into an even number of primes, while b decomposes into an odd number of primes. So that's just the definition of a number being good. Then our goal is to show that there are infinitely many perfect fourth powers that are good. So looking at our condition, we see that this condition is super general. So that means we'll probably prove some very, very special case of this setup. So that means we just need to figure out what that very, very special case will be. And I think maybe this is towards how we could think about that very, very special case. So we can think about this decomposition into an even number of primes as being a perfect square. So we would have A as a perfect square. So notice that not everything that decomposes into an even number of primes is a perfect square. For example, three times five, which is 15, decomposes into two primes, but is not a perfect square. But like I said, we're looking for a special case of this that might look like sort of a famous math problem that we might know how to solve. And then this bit that says decomposes into an odd number of primes, well, maybe that's just a prime times a perfect square. So maybe B is a prime times a perfect square. So let's maybe keep that in mind and rephrase or maybe write down something that is stricter than this up here, but will imply this up here. So let's maybe show there infinitely many n such that n to the fourth equals x squared plus p times y squared where the GCD of X and Y is one. And furthermore, we'll put on the condition that P does not divide X. So let's notice that if the role of X squared is A up here, then that means this A, which is X squared, like I said, decomposes into an even number of primes. And likewise, B is this P times Y squared, well, y squared decomposes into an even number of primes, multiply it by this prime p, and it decomposes into an odd number of primes. So we'd be good to go in that case. Furthermore, looking at it like this, if we for a minute forget the p that is there, then what we have is the decomposition of a number into a sum of squares. And there is like a standard technique to show when something can and cannot be written as a sum of squares. And I think that is maybe kind of well known to math contest takers. So that's kind of the motivation of looking at this in the first place. Next up, we'll say that, well, maybe we could do this for a super special prime, maybe the smallest prime, and that would simplify it even more. And so let's do that. So let's do this for two times y squared, and then we'll have two does not divide x. So in other words, x is odd. Okay, so like I said, if we can find infinitely many solutions to this type of equation, then definitely we've got infinitely many perfect fourth powers that are good with this definition up here. So hopefully I've uh, motivated our reasons for this simplification of this kind of crazy condition into a more familiar condition. Okay, so now that we have something like this, we're gonna prove a couple of claims which are not exactly related to the goodness, like this GCD doesn't need to be one for our first claim, but are related to these claims involving sums of squares and will push us towards the right direction. So in particular, the first claim that we will prove is if we can write M 
and n, which are natural numbers, as something squared. So I'll just put box squared plus two times box squared. Then we can write their product this way as well. So maybe we'll write m times n like this also. Great. So this is maybe motivated by the fact that if we can write m as the sum of two squares and n as the sum of two squares, they can, then we can also write m times n as the sum of two squares. But here we don't have the sum of two squares. We've got a square plus twice a square. Okay, so let's get to it. So we'll start with the assumption that m and n can be written in this form. So let's suppose that m is equal to x squared plus 2y squared and n is equal to z squared plus 2w squared. And here x, y, z, and w are all taken to be integers. We're not considering them being relatively prime or anything like this at the moment though. For the complex numbers if we wanted to and that's exactly the trick that we'll use here but before we do that let's write m times n which is x squared plus 2 y squared times z squared plus 2 w squared like that now like i said we're going to factor this over the complex numbers so let's maybe underline that in green and we'll underline this one in blue and we can factor this one underlined in green as x plus y times the square root of negative two. So let's maybe put green parentheses around that. And then times x minus y times the square root of negative two. And I'm kind of separating these out because I want to interweave this factoring. Okay. So notice if we were to multiply those two together, we would definitely get x squared plus two y squared. Then we'll do a similar factorization for our z squared plus two w squared. We'll have z plus w times root negative two, and we'll have z minus w times root negative two. Great. And now we'll combine these that are neighbors of each other in this new setup. So I'll underline these in this magenta and this purple color and see what we get. Okay, so this magenta color will give us x times z and then minus 2yw. So that's the stuff that's not attached to the square root of negative 2. And then the stuff attached to the square root of negative 2 will be xw plus zy. So xw plus yz. And then we'll have the square root of negative 2. Good. So that's that bit right there. Now we need to multiply together the stuff in the purple parentheses. But because of our setup, we'll have exactly the same thing with just a minus sign between these. So we'll have x, z minus 2y, w, and then minus x, w plus y, z times the square root of negative 2. Okay, that's good. And now let's notice that we have an a plus b times an a minus b scenario. So that means when we multiply these together, we'll get a difference of squares, but that difference in squares includes this imaginary number, the square root of negative two. So that turns into a sum of squares. So in fact, what we have here is xz minus 2yw, and then plus two, that should be squared, because that's our a squared, and then plus two times xw plus yz quantity squared. So let's see, did we do it? Yes, we did. So let's note that we started with m as this sum in this shape that we discussed and n in the sum in the shape that we discussed. And we ended with m times n in this shape. We have something squared plus two times something squared. So now that we have this nice re result, let's keep going. So for our next claim, I'll introduce a new word and that is very good. So we'll use this condition down here to be the very good condition. 
So in other words, we say m is very good if we can write it as x squared plus 2y squared, where 2 does not divide x, so x is odd, and the GCD of x and y is 1. And notice by our previous discussion, if m is very good, then it is good. So here we'll show that if m is very good, then so is m squared. And let's notice that that will immediately imply that if m is good, then m squared is good. And that's because with our setup over there, very good implies good. Okay, so we know that if m can be written in this form, then so can m squared. So we just have to check these two rules over here. So let's do that. So let's suppose that we have m equals x squared plus 2y squared. And we also know that the GCD of x and y is 1 and that 2 does not divide x. So now, using our calculations from before, we know that m squared can be written as follows. And this is just like dropping in x and y for z and w in our previous calculation. So here we'll have x squared minus 2y squared, and then plus 2 times 2xy quantity squared. So something like that. But now let's note that the GCD of x squared minus 2y squared and 2xy is equal to 1. And I won't actually work this out in detail. I'll leave this as a homework exercise. This follows fairly straightforwardly from the definition of the GCD. Another thing that we can notice is that since x is odd, x squared is odd, and thus x squared minus 2y squared, which is an even number, is also odd. So maybe that's important to point out as well. This number right here is odd, which is exactly what we need. Okay, but this is exactly the condition for m squared to be very good. So that means m squared is very good. Okay, so what do we need to finish this thing off? Well, in fact, all we need is to find a single perfect fourth power that is very good, and then the square of that fourth power will be very good, and the cube of that fourth power will be very good, and then so on and so forth. So in fact, three to the fourth works. I'll let you guys find that one on your own, but I found another one. Let's notice that 17 to the fourth is what I'll call very good, and that's because we can write it as 287 squared plus 2 times 24 four squared. So that means it's very good. That means it's good because very good implies good. But now the square of this is also very good and thus good. And then the square of that is also very good and thus good. So in fact, 17 to the two in all to the fourth is very good. And this is going to be true for all natural numbers in. So this is our infinite list of very good for perfect fourth powers, but then again, like we've said over and over and over again in this video, if something's very good, then it's good, and that finishes this whole thing off. So quite a while ago, I did a series of videos on writing natural numbers as sums of squares. Uh, the first one of those videos should be on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out, and that's a good place to stop.